Ted Haggard here, St. James Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I pastor the Storehouse Ministry, which is the house church ministry of St. James, and it's awesome. It is absolutely great. If you'd like to come, you'd be welcome. Well, some of you would be welcome. All right, so uh, I'm I'm just kidding. Um, today we're in Romans, the third chapter. And Romans, the third chapter is just fabulous. It's one of my favorite chapters. And we're going to start in verse nine, because there's a lot to cover here. Um, uh, the, the first part is about the faithfulness of God and the role of sin and the role of righteousness and all that. You can work that out with your pastor. Okay. But beginning in verse nine, it's universal for all of us. And we've got to get the point. Here And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Here the Bible says, well, then, should we conclude that we Jews are better than others? All right. Modern translation would be, well, then, should we conclude that we Baptists are better than the others? Or should we conclude that we Mennonites are better than the others? Or should we conclude that we Christians are better than the others? All right, here he says, no. He says, should we conclude that we Jews are better than the others, which is the presupposition, because the Old Testament teaches that. The Jews are God's chosen people. All right, but with the cross, all that changed. Now, everyone has equal access to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, here he says, so are we Jews better than others? No, not at all. For we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, and I'm a Gentile, are under the power of sin. All right, so all Jews and Gentiles are under the power of sin. All right, now, we do grow in righteousness. Christ's righteousness is infused into us. All right, and we appreciate that, and that's displayed in, in us growing from glory to glory to glory. But we are also bound over to disobedience so that God might have mercy on us all. You won't be perfect until you see Christ face to face. So stop being so harsh on people that have different sins than you do. Okay. Uh, I always tell our people, uh, be very, very careful because you don't know what you're going to be tempted with in 10 years. And so just be humble and be grateful for the grace of God that's in our lives. All right, so it says, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. We all agree for that. Self-righteous people will say, oh, no, we've all sinned. We're, we're all sinned. Well, here's what the Bible actually says. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good. Not a single one. So get over that. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. And, and see, I've heard lots of people describe cussing in bars and things like that. I think the most foul speech that goes on are people that think they believe the gospel. But... They're judgmental and punitive when they hear about somebody else's sin. The way you can know that you believe that Christ and Christ alone is your righteousness is your response to other people's sin. If it is redemptive, then you probably believe that Christ and Christ alone is your righteousness. If your response to other people's sin is punitive or judgmental, that means you're impressed with yourself. And that means you haven't really grasped this idea. And when Christians who are supposed to be redemptive are punitive and judgmental, that's when their talk is foul. And they, that foul is like a stench from an open grave. It happens in deacons meetings. It happens in elders meetings. It happens in Sunday school classes. And so be redemptive. Be redemptive. You are the church. Here it says their tongues are filled with lies. Hello. 
Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Oh, surely this is the Old Testament. Oh, it's in Romans. Hmm, what do I do with that? Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. And that's why spirit-filled Christians need just as many sleep aids and just as many uh, medications to handle uh, uh, mental and emotional problems as the world does. It's because we haven't, we haven't settled on what the gospel really is. Obviously, the law applies to those to whom it was given, for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. So settle that. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Now, everybody, we need to listen closely to the rest of this chapter. But now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. As was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone is equally sinful. Everyone is equally separated from God on their own. And the only way to deal with it is faith in God. Now, some people say, well, I repent of my sins all the time. That's just about good. But it's not there because you don't need to repent of every one of your sins. That's not news. You need to repent of being you. Because you're wicked, you're evil, you lie, you you are destructive to people. And so the repentance that is required is that we repent of us, that we turn away from being us and we let Christ infuse us with the Holy Spirit and the word of God and become a new creation. And so the the Bible is a mirror. It's not to say it's not for you to read it and say, oh, I need to, I need to give more, or I need to pray more. It's not for that. It's so that you can see that you're not a giver, or you're not a prayer, or you're not a lover, or whatever. And you can say, I need to, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I need to be committed to the Word of God. I need to grow in the Word of God. Because we've got to repent of being woefully, at our core, thoroughly sinful. And when we repent of that, then the other things take care of themselves. But if we're going to say, you know, I was tempted to tell a lie and I need to repent of that before I go to sleep tonight. And, and I, I, um, I, uh, uh, I I exaggerated my importance when I was talking with some new people in town, and uh, I need to repent of that. Listen, all that's just evidence of who you are. Okay, it, I, I know I'm way too soft on this, but I've read about myself in the paper that Christians have said, and if I was that guy, the world, I, I mean... I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. And so I know something about redemption, and I know something about religious judgmentalism. And listen, the liberals in California didn't come up with canceling. We Christians have been canceling people for 2,000 years. And so they just stole the idea from us. Okay, so... We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God 
when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in past times. Do you see it? Okay, for he was looking ahead to include them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. In other words, like right now, I hear people say, oh, I just wish Jesus would come. The world's getting so evil. Well, the reason Jesus doesn't come is he wants to give people more time to repent. All right. So you saying you want Jesus to come back now means you hate those people. And you don't want the cross to apply to them. And you don't want a redemption to apply to them. We need to thank God for every day that he delays his coming. So we can reach more and serve more. If you believe in that. It could be that your beliefs are all about your own self-righteousness. If that's the case, you're not even a Christian. Because a Christian is a person that realizes that Christ and Christ alone is their only righteousness. Gail has a better definition of that, uh, of being a Christian than I do, but that's mine. Okay, God this is, did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? Can we be proud of that? Can we boast about it? Can we brag about it? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. Actually, it's not based on anything we've done. It is based on faith. So we're made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. After all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, indeed. Of course he is. There is only one God, and he makes people right with himself only by faith. Whether they are Jews or Gentiles. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Is that awesome? I love this. <laughs> That chapter is my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. Okay. All right. God bless you all. Uh, it's been great being with you. Hey, if you think I'm a little tough, um, you're probably right. Okay. Bye-bye.